Now today we're looking at an air pump relay for the air injection system. Maybe you have a trouble code for 410 or 1410 and you want to see if this relay is working correctly. Now the easiest way to get access to the relay is by removing the front bumper. I don't want to do that. So what I did do is remove the front wheel along with the inner fender well. And if you need a guide on how to do that, I'll include a link right now on the top right hand of the screen. And once we do that, now we have clear access to both the air pump for the air injection system and the relay. Now we can test the relay while it's still attached to the vehicle, but I'm going to remove it and place it on the bench. It's a lot easier to do and it's a lot easier for you to see what's going on. So we have a harness connector right here and then we have another one underneath right here. Now what I'll often try to do is just clean up the area the best that I can. Right here is a harness connector. I needed two hands to remove this. It was, it was incredibly tight. But right here, we press down on the tab, pull on the body, and after some tugging, it was able to come off. And then right here, as you can see, this harness connector is on this metal bracket. And there's actually a tab right up here. Not sure if the camera can focus that. But what you do is you press on the tab. In other words, you see this, it doesn't go anywhere. You need to press down the tab and pull like this. And then we have a harness connector. Just feel for the tab, right there is your tab, okay? So now this is nice and loose, and let's go to the other harness connector. Now same with this harness connector, it's on a metal bracket. As you can see, it's not going anywhere. But for this, instead of pressing up, I'm pressing down. And then this slides off. Let me see if I can do it with one hand. And then same deal, there's a harness connector, and the tab is right here. So tab down, remove the harness connector, and now we can remove the relay. Now to remove the relay from the vehicle, we have two 10 millimeter fasteners. This is a nice wrench I purchased off Amazon. It's a long handle. One end is fixed, the other one is ratcheted. And as always, if you happen to need any tools, I'll have a link in the description box below to our Amazon affiliate site. And then we have the relay. Now testing the relay is very, very simple. What we need is a battery source. So you can use your car battery, but chances are you have something in the garage that you can use. For example, if you have cordless tools, if you have an RC battery pack, in other words, you need 12 volts of power to turn this on. So for example, if you have cordless tools, just take a look at the top, and as you can see, we have a positive and a negative so that we can use this as a power source. In my case, I'm not going to use this because this is a 20 volt pack and not a 12 volt pack. But what I do have is an RC car battery pack that pushes out 11 volts, which is perfect. This will work to turn on our relay. The other thing that we need is a digital multimeter, again, purchased off Amazon for $23. You have a number of different settings on the multimeter. In our case, we are doing a continuity test that looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot on the multimeter. Go ahead, plug in the leads. And continuity simply means two points make a connection. So looking at the relay, we have a small connector and a large connector. To power this on, we need to provide power from the pack to the small connector. So take a look inside and you'll find these two metal prongs. So to help me, transfer power from the pack to this location. I just have two wires with alligator ends. So simply taking one lead, placing it on the first terminal, and the other lead will go on the second terminal. And then taking the lead directly to our power source. Just make sure you do not cross the wires here. You don't want to create any uh, pretty large sparks. And if this is working correctly, a good sign is a clicking sound. It's not definite that it's working, but it is a very good sign. So let's see what happens. Can you hear that? Wow, it's a very strong, very strong, very strong relay. Okay, now I just, I'm going to do that in a second, but first I just want to hook this up again, continuity. And then my leads coming from the multimeter directly to the large terminal. 
So we should have no continuity now because there's no power source going to the relay. But now watch, make sure we are on continuity, which we are. So this I think gives us a better view of what's going on. So let's connect this battery source and see if we have continuity. Here we go, make sure you guys can see this, okay. So you hear that? So this verifies that the relay is working correctly. And that's what it takes to test and if you have to replace the air pump relay. I highly recommend you purchase the factory parts. In this case, it's a Denzel part made in Japan. You're much better off paying more money, get the factory stuff because it will last a lot longer than the aftermarket or even these knockoff names on Amazon and so forth. Purchase the factory parts. As always, thank you for watching.